Welcome to a video I like to call the deep dive video. Once a week, I go through all the charts that I look at and I pick out the ones that I really didn't talk about at all or maybe just one or two times that are still beneficial for us to look at because we still might get some insight or at least have an update of where things are standing. This is being prepared for Tuesday, February 21st. The first chart is an RSI measurement on the VIX. When it goes above 70 with the RSI or below 30, that just means we've moved pretty far pretty fast in one direction or the other. Right now, we're not really giving any kind of an extreme warning. So whether it's above or below 50, I don't pay up as much of attention to that when it applies to the VIX. Another chart is just how far have we gone down since the all-time high. Well, at this point, we're down 15.35%, and you can see the red line over there marking Friday's close. As far as support and resistance, we use a thing called the Itchy Moku Cloud. Sometimes I affectionately refer to this as the Itchy and Scratchy Cloud. We really only pay attention to this when we're in the cloud itself, and it provided a pretty good support level going into the end of 2022. Well, we've come up out of that, and the cloud actually turned green. I know a lot of people use these. Basically, these are moving averages that are just shifted forward. But right now, we're not near any kind of a cloud. Technical alerts, this is just as of Friday. If I included them for the whole week, it would be longer than this screen could handle. But we read these from the bottom up. Right after the open on Friday, the tech sector had a bullish 50-20 crossover. We call that a golden cross. Nothing as it applies to the S&P, where the NASDAQ went below 11.8, then finally 11.7. Number of sectors had more negative signals. That's when these are red where the financials cross below 80, the industrials below 70, and the real estate cross below a BPI of 80, the utilities cross below 30. So we're seeing some weakness within the sectors. We did see the industrials give a BPI going above 70. Now, just because they go above 80 and then come back down or 70 and come back down, that's not necessarily a negative. It just means that they got a little too far extreme and they're just working off that condition. Another thing that's interesting to look at is there are five indexes that we follow closely. The mid caps, the small caps, the Dow, the NASDAQ 100, and the S&P, which is what we focus on the most. I like to see how are the scores amongst those five indexes. Right now, the index with the best score are the mid caps at 87.4, followed by the small caps at 84.2. Then in third place is the Dow at 62. In fourth place is the S&P at 47.3, and the Qs are in last place at 41.7. One short-term chart to look at is called a short-term rainbow. It plots a 10 through 50 simple moving average in different colors, so it looks kind of cool. Really, we just want to see what are these moving averages having a tendency to do. Right now, we're still above these moving averages. We came back down through the 10, and we're right about at the 20, we're going to be watching that on other charts to see if that support level can hold. Another short-term indicator is the Williams percent R. This is pretty touchy. It can go extreme positive or negative pretty quickly. The other indicator that goes along with this, the Stoke RSI, I show that in the daily video because it's already extreme negative with the downturn that we saw. Here, it just shows that we are declining with the Williams percent R. Intermediate term charts, the standard deviation, just so that we're not getting too far away from the standard or average price. The mass index is not generating a signal right now. The Connors RSI, we really pay attention to this when we get extreme positive or negative. We're below the dashed line, so that's slightly negative, but we're not getting any extreme readings. Here's an intermediate term rainbow going from 50 to 100 period in the moving averages. We're a little farther away from this rainbow, and we just see what is the overall tendency of the rainbow to do. In a good solid uptrend, we'll see the colors all moving uniformly in the same direction. For 2022, they were chopping around all over the place. Another indicator is the vortex. This measures buyers and sellers. The green line is buyers, and it was flat even though it's on top, so we're slightly positive. One thing that's negative about this chart is we have dropped below this one line and the sellers continue to advance even though they're still on the bottom. We'll be watching this chart to see if there's a cross soon. Ease of movement going back from Thursday to Friday, one period, 
not really showing anything. Going back 14 periods, we're looking a little more positive, but we were pretty much flat in our latest reading. We're above zero, so that's slightly positive. Money flow index, we're above 50, although we are declining. So it's positive that we're above 50, but it's negative that we are declining. The Sean Trend Meter, after giving us an extreme positive reading, came back down, went extreme positive again. Now it's working its way lower. Moving average study with the 20, 50, and 200 day moving averages, pretty much flat to slightly declining with the 20, ticked up a little bit with the 50, and we're flat to slightly rising on the 200. Check an oscillator when we're above this zero line, that's positive, and advancing, that's positive, and that's what this indicator suggests. The boom indicator measures how far do we get away from a 50 period moving average, and then another measure is how far do we get away from a 200 day moving average. And that's what this measures is the distance and we're not really getting any kind of an extreme reading the rsi based on 14 periods we're still above this 50 line so it's positive but it is declining the rsi based on nine periods has dropped below this dashed line the percent b indicator works with pollinger bands to, to see when we go outside of the upper or lower band when we were really shooting up, we started to go outside of the band. Well, now we've been working our way down. And then when we cross below this dashed line, that's turning things more negative. The parabolic SAR system, when the dots are on top, that means it's negative And we continue to show that. The CCI based on 20 periods is dropping below the zero line, but it's not extreme. There's another chart, the CCI 14, that is extreme. And I showed that in the daily video. The Copic curve generated a signal right in the beginning of 2023. It's now wearing off. The advanced decline ratio, the blue line is just starting to drop below the midpoint. That's negative, but the red line is still on top. Balance of power, as long as we're above this dashed line, that's positive, And it actually increased in Friday's session. How far away are we from the 200-day simple moving average? When we're above zero, this area is green. The ultimate oscillator is above 50 and advancing, so that's positive, but not giving us an extreme reading. And you probably have never seen this before. This is a chart that I use not only to show overbought and oversold indications. This measures one, two, and three standard deviations away from the current price. When we get up to three standard deviations away, that means we've gone pretty far pretty fast and we're due for things to pull back. And that's exactly what happened. I also use this chart for entry points for different strategies that I implement and I teach in my classes. Some different charts, the Heiken Ashi is now looking more negative with a dark candle. The Kegi is also turned red and going down, that's negative. The Renko is still positive with open blocks. And the three line break is also positive with open bars. Nothing new on the point and figure chart. No X's or O's were drawn this past week. A long term rainbow, measures from 50 periods all the way up to 250 periods and we're still above most of these moving averages a lot of the shorter term ones are starting to turn back up but if we see a real decline it's going to jumble up this whole mess special k is a very long term oscillator and it's trying to get up to this moving average and cross but it just can't seem to do it yet some broad market measures, we have the Vixen, which is the VIX on the NASDAQ 100. It actually ticked down a little bit in Friday's session, and it's still suggesting that fear is rather complacent. Going back 250 periods on a rate of change chart, we came down to the COVID lows, and we're starting to bounce back up. And here's a longer term look at that same chart. Looking at some of our possible positive scenarios, the Qs to the S&P, they're still in an overall uptrend, even though they declined in Friday's session. Discretionary to the S&P continues to be positive, and large cap growth is still outperforming large cap value, even though we're seeing it come back down to the moving average. Then looking at growth versus value ratios with the large cap, showing a little bit of weakness, but still positive. The mid caps, also some weakness, but positive, and we're pretty much flat to slightly positive with the small caps. The percent of stocks above their 200-day simple moving averages, it's not really giving us any kind of an extreme reading currently. And the S&P 500 stocks above their 50-period moving average, not an extreme reading. Same thing with the mid caps and the small caps. 
Equity put call ratio, I used to show this a lot in the daily briefs, but a lot of times when I get ready to make the video, this chart hasn't updated and it seems to take a lot longer to update, so I have to leave it out of the video. In Friday's session, we did turn up. What we pay attention to more is a five period simple moving average of the equity put call ratio, which has been declining. And then we have a long term look at this same chart. When we really spiked up and it's starting to come back down, sometimes that will give support to the S&P. We're not really giving any kind of a significant reading currently. This is a real long, simple moving average, 253 periods going back a full year. That's the number of trading days in a year. And you can see once this gets going in a certain direction, it tends to stay in that direction. It looked like we were rolling over a little bit and we still might do that, but we're not really turning down with much conviction. So thank you. I hope that you found this insightful. Please feel free to check out the daily video, the weekly video, the intermarket analysis video, and I'll also be preparing a supplemental video where I go through some Isabel Net charts. So I will talk to you in the next video.